This A-level IB biology video is on synapses. We'll start by looking at the definition of a synapse and then we'll look at all the steps involved in a synaptic transmission. So remember that a synapse is a junction between two neurons. Importantly, an electrical impulse is converted to a chemical, a neurotransmitter, and that neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds to the postsynaptic membrane. Now we must list all the stages involved in a synaptic transmission in great detail. So first of all, the action potential arrives at the axon terminal. Second step is that the voltage-gated calcium channels open. Third step, the calcium enters the presynaptic neuron. Fourth step, the calcium signals to the neurotransmitter vesicles. Fifth step, the vesicles move to the membrane and dock, which effectively means that they attach. Sixth step is that the neurotransmitters are released by exocytosis and they diffuse across the synapse. The seventh step is that the neurotransmitters bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. And the final step is that the sodium gates open and an action potential is initiated in the next neuron. Let's make sure you're happy with labelling the synapse. So here's the synaptic cleft, here's the presynaptic membrane, here's the postsynaptic membrane with receptors for the neurotransmitter, which remember has diffused across the synaptic cleft and got released from these bubbles known as vesicles by the process of exocytosis. Now the type of neurotransmitter you're most likely to come across is known as acetylcholine. Notice that that neurotransmitter, that acetylcholine gets recycled. You don't make new neurotransmitter every single nerve impulse. Instead, you recycle the neurotransmitter and if you're talking about acetylcholine, the enzyme cholinesterase is important. Now that cholinesterase breaks down acetylcholine inside the synaptic cleft the acetylcholine is returned to the presynaptic membrane and it reforms. The last thing to add is on neonicotinoid pesticides. Now a pesticide, any word that ends in side means death, so it means the death of pests, so effectively it's chemicals used to kill pests. And these pests are usually insects which damage farmers' crops. So how does a neonicotinoid pesticide work? Well, they bind to the acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic membranes of cholinergic synapses in insects. Why is it a cholinergic synapse? Well, remember, it's because it uses acetylcholine as its neurotransmitter. Now, ordinarily, acetylcholine would obviously be broken down by cholinesterase enzyme. However, cholinesterase enzyme is unable to break down the neonicotinoid pesticide. And the knock-on effect is that acetylcholine can no longer bind. Crucially, all synaptic transmission is halted and stopped. And that kills the insect. So yeah, it sounds like a really clever, good pesticide to be using. However, the terrible thing about this pesticide is it kills pretty much all insects, including the all-important honeybee, which apart from looking super cute and obviously not harming anything, is so important for pollination. It's all very well killing the pest, but you're not going to get fertilization and pollination if you kill all the honeybees. So I think this needs rethinking.